Morning Intuitives. Thanks again for tuning in, and thank you for all new subscribers. I did remember to take my nasal spray in advance before trying to film, although given the recent rapid changes in weather from 67 degrees to 40 degrees, it plays hell on allergies, So, but I, I shouldn't have the heavy breathing that I did yesterday that was quite annoying in addition to, you know, the already annoying sound of my laryngitis ravaged gravelly voice that I don't like. So what I wanted to talk about today is narcissism. More specifically, why do some people say that there can't be that many narcissists? You know, a lot of people say you, you couldn't have possibly dated a narcissist or been raised by a narcissist. Narcissists are only about 1.5% of the population. So I want to get into what the DSM says about narcissistic personality disorder and why that number of 1.5 percent is probably far higher in practicality and the reasons why I feel that way in terms of people who have suffered from narcissistic abuse as compared to an actual diagnosed narcissist. So we're going to start with the DSM. In the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, commonly referred to as DSM-5, NPD, or Narcissistic Personality Disorder, is defined as comprising a pervasive pattern of grandiosity in fantasy or behavior, a consistent need for admiration, and a lack of empathy, beginning early in adulthood and present in a variety of contexts, as indicated by the presence of at least five of the following nine criteria. So in order to be diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder, one must have at least five or more of the following criteria, which goes as follows. A grandiose sense of self-importance, a preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. I don't know about that one. A belief that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with others, special or high status people or institutions. Starting to sound like a lot of politicians to me. A need for excessive admiration. Okay, a lot of celebrities there. A sense of entitlement. A lot of baby boomers there. Exploitative behavior. Yeah, exploiting others. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a narc to me. The big one, a total lack of empathy, so that excludes all as empaths. Envy of others or a belief that others are envious of him or her. Again, reminds me of a lot of boomers in the area where I live. <clears throat> arrogant or haunt or haunty behaviors or attitude. So, you know, real arrogant people boast they're the best, pump their chest. So in order to be diagnosed a narcissist by, you know, the requirements set forth by the DSM-5, one must meet at least five of those nine criteria. Well, there's a problem with that when they say 1.5% of the population are narcissists. First off, most narcissists probably never even speak to a psychiatrist because, you know, they believe they're so special, as you've seen in the aforementioned uh, criteria for diagnosis that they would never assume something's wrong with them and therefore would never seek treatment or be subjected to being tested by this criteria. So there's that to take into account. And another major point to take into account why there's so many uh, victims of narcissistic abuse is, okay, so there's nine criteria and you need five to be diagnosed. Well, what about the people that meet four of them? Or what about people who lie and maybe they meet, you know, more than more than four, maybe they meet five, but they're able to somehow convince a professional that they only meet four of them. So somebody, for example, who meets four of the criteria to be diagnosed with NPD, while not by the DSM, you know, qualify for the classification of narcissistic personality disorder, are certainly still able to afflict narcissistic abuse onto others. You know, so there is, you know, the nutshell of 
my theory of why the number of narcissists in practice, not in diagnosis, is much higher than the actual number uh, of the population that is said to have narcissistic personality disorder. So, like I said, someone who meets four or even three of these criteria can still function as a narcissist and inflict narcissistic abuse on others. I mean, some of these criteria, I mean, we've all seen it. Some of these shouldn't be surprising to anybody. I mean, I would say the big one is lack of empathy, you know, in the red flags for someone who's you're dealing with a narcissist, you know, the preoccupation of fantasies and unlimited success and power and brilliance. Yeah, I, I see a lot of grandiosity in that respect to people that, you know, think that they're so much better than everybody else that they essentially should in some shape or form have a dictatorship over certain other people whether you know they may not be as grandiose to say as they should be the dictator of the United States but I do know people that think they should be the dictator of Chester County and it's based on the fact that they just know and that's their justification if you I've pushed these people on their ideals and they just say I just know so the excessive need for admiration, another big one. You know, you're so preoccupied with what others think of you. you. You you live a lie. You wear that mask. You want everybody to think you're something that you're not. That's why I always say in previous videos, the best thing you can do to get quote-unquote revenge against a narcissist is to expose them for who they really are, to rip that mask off, and that'll thus take away their ability to receive all that admiration because people are going to see them for who they really are. Once the mask is off, they can't put it back on. Exploitative behavior, the most dangerous of all the narcissists. This is common in what I call the chess master narcissist, those that everyone else is just a pawn for them in their game to reach their end game, and they will use, abuse, exploit you however they see fit. They have no remorse for it, no empathy, because you and everybody else is just a means to an end. Like, that's common in relationships where one party will think that they're in a relationship and the other party is just having a casual fling. You're just a means to an end. You're, you're satisfying a need, and once they don't need you anymore, you're gone. Bye. That's what they do. I've seen it. I went through it once myself. Grandiose sense of self-importance. I've seen that a lot. That's the one, you know, you'll find that, I think, most commonly in the workforce, the narcissistic boss who thinks that, as I mentioned, you know, one of my bosses who was decades out of touch, they think that they're, they're so important and, you know, only they can function in their job. No one can ever replace them. They, they must remain in that position until the day they die because it, they're the only thing holding it together. The second they leave, it, it'll all fall apart. You know, very, very common in in that respect. The bully narcissist, the arrogant behavior will usually be the biggest biggest telltale sign there. The beat their chest, say how tough they are, say how badass they are, you know, how fit they are. You'll see them peacocking around gyms a lot. And those narcissists deep down, I think, know that they're living a lie. Those that favor that specific criteria, I mean, these criteria, like, cognitive functions in a personality you know if a narcissist say for example you have 10 narcissists that all meet five of the criteria they're all going to have those criteria in a different stack they're going to have different of the nine criteria too but like not all narcissists uh main tell will be like a grandiose sense of self-importance you know some their biggest tell might be their their sense of in, their entitlement or lack of empathy so on Sense of entitlement, you know, I want to get into that one a little bit because that one to me is the big key with what's been termed as generational narcissist, as I've mentioned. That is, you know, why so many, including myself, consider the majority of the baby boomer generation a narcissistic generation. You know, I'm going to get into it a little bit, but for an in-depth look at that, I suggest you read... A Generation of Sociopaths, How Baby Boomers Betrayed America by Bruce Cannon Gibney. You know, he gets into it quite well in that. It's on Audible. And no, I don't know him. But it's 
a good book. So that sense of entitlement that they deserve perks and benefits and rights that others don't. I see that all the time with a lot of the boomers in my area. Like right now, they're on this crusade that um, people over 65 shouldn't have to pay taxes anymore, so they remain in their homes. So never mind, like for example, never mind that the younger generations had to pay triple for college and inflation-adjusted dollars and are working, on average, six hours more than boomers sit at the same age for 23% less wages. Uh, cost of car insurance, the taxes on the middle class are a higher percentage than they were when boomers were young, housing prices are through the roof. None of that matters. Only what only ma Pensions are all but gone, unions are all but gone. The only thing that matters is the boomers. So all that, you know, us younger generations only exist to serve them, so we should be doing more for them. What's a sin to them is that, God forbid, you know, uh, a 70-year-old boomer who is an empty nester, just them and their spouse, and they own two cars and a boat and a five-bedroom house that's empty now. God forbid that boomer has to downsize because there's memories and nostalgia, and that shouldn't, that's change, and change is bad. They should be able to, you know, be supplemented to own their, their, their sports car, their daily drive car, their boat, and their summer house, and their empty five-bedroom house, and, and to expect them to settle for anything less is a sin. They're entitled to that based on the year they were born, you know, because only their hard work matters. Only their grade, ma you know, their grades in school matter. They deserve that and more just by virtue of being born when they were born. And I see this, you know, far more than I wish I did, but I do. Makes no sense to me. That to me is a great example of a narcissistic sense of entitlement that they can't explain. They can't explain why they have that entitlement they just feel that they do and that everyone else needs to acknowledge that and how dare you question it you know they even there's no way you can question that at all it's just that you know i say so therefore it is kind of thing so i wanted to do a little video on explaining why there's probably far more narcissists than those that are projected to exist within the population, at least in practicality of inflicting narcissistic abuse upon others. Please leave your comments below if you have any questions on anything I said, or if you want to challenge me on anything I just said. Please like and subscribe so my videos can reach more people and potentially help them. And when dealing with a narcissist, always trust your intuition. Don't sell out your integrity to get back at them. They're usually not that bright. There's better ways of doing it. Just rip the mask off.